these are books here that you can get at any one of the stores. Walmart might, might be an example. And I made my own. And then down here, it was, I put their names and started out <clears throat> with, a, I would say, paste things in that I felt that would be uplifting. And then always refer to when you're in a real, real down thinking mood, read the Deserata and then points to Pond. So, my first question on uh, the first part on how to become a winner in your process is about selecting it. Now, do you think a lot of people do not get what they want out of life because they don't know what they want? This is true, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Some people uh, go with the tide or they're limited on, on uh, church dogma that if you want something, uh, it's the work of the devil and you're not, you don't deserve it. A lot of it depends on what your background was, what culture you came from, what was your upbringing. And uh, you have to spend maybe, like I said yesterday, from one to seven, you're subjected to your parents' concepts and things. From that point on, you have to make your, and then, you're, then you go in and your peers, I mean, you know, that's important. Uh, when is it that you can really say, I want to be myself? And that's when you decide, what is it that you want? We're always influenced. That's a given. And so after you're influenced, what direction do you want to go? What's important to you? The second one is about projecting. Uh, and is projecting just a form of visualization? And uh, Yes, yes, you're projecting. <clears throat> you have projected now, uh, what is it that you want? So now you're going to project it someplace. And projecting would be to see it, to see it, to visualize it, to make a little scenario of it. Uh, some, in some cases, if you say, I can't visualize, I teach them how to visualize. And uh, that is just, I give them an orange, and I said, you see the orange? And then, see the orange, okay. See the sun kissed on the orange. Now, close your eyes and see the orange. I said, that's as simple as it is. Because I'm saying, I can't visualize, but you can. It's a mental thing. And so, when you are projecting it, you are visualizing it. And visualizing it means putting it in a situation, like a car, you're sitting in the car, you smell, new car, color of the car, standing by the car, that's visualization. And you're always in that picture. It's all about expecting it. What does that really mean? Is it like, how do you expect something? How do I expect something? It's a given. You just uh, know it's coming, never doubt it, if uh, something comes to your mind, or you, and don't tell anybody. Because when you tell people, they have a negative condemnation and they say, what makes her think she's going to win that? Now, in my case, because I won everything, it was to my advantage. Because they'd say, she's going to win it. And so they gave me more energy. But if you are surrounded by negative people, then I would not tell anybody. I would keep it to myself, and I would expect it. I know it would come. And then if I got disappointed, and this is very common, I would say, no, there's just, there's no failure. There's a delay in results. And then continue to do that. Because sometimes things that you are expecting uh, take a little longer than you anticipated. Now, uh, all of that makes a lot of sense. But a lot of people will still have that nagging doubt. They will say, I've tried it, uh, but I'm not successful. I'm not getting what I want out of life. I'm still not a winner. What do you say to those people that have listened to everything you have just said, but then come back and say, I'm still not where I want. I'm still not getting what I want. OK, what you shared with me, the one thing when they say this, I'm trying to do this. I said, honey, you can try 
and try and try the rest of your life. That to me is negative. What you, you take try out of your vocabulary, it's coming. It's coming and that's it. Trying means you keep on trying. That's negative. I never try, I do something. Very, very cool. Do you have any other follow-up questions about that? Um, you don't ever try, you do. No. Hold on. I just said uh, Mike, uh, a, a follow-up question. This should be in your voice too, because everyone yeah. else is in your voice. But what is a good way of building up your degree of... Um, Oh yeah, no. It, in the beginning, it's hard to expect. Yeah, this no, I, th I think that's an excellent. That uh, yeah. So, to somebody that is just learning how to become a winner, how to use the system to get what they want, would you recommend that they start with smaller, easier contests? Does that even exist? Is there? Uh, yeah. How how do you re recommend you get started with this? Uh, if you are, especially if you have not been a winner before. Okay. Uh, it all depends on the individual. If they think small, then they get small things. And if this makes you feel comfortable, then start out. Uh, I started out with an outboard motor. That was the thing. Then I went back to just bicycles and roller skates and footballs and little stuff that the, made the kids happy. And then all of a sudden, when we had a decision uh, let's let's project for somebody to uh, to pay for our vacation every year. So we never paid for our vacation. So we went to uh, dude ranches, to New York, to Europe, uh, to Disney World twice. And so those were leading up to it. Well, then as you win, I guess you'd say you get more confidence. So if the individual feels like hey, that sounds overwhelming. I think I'm just going to project for something small. Then do it. And then build up to it. Every person is different. And so that's what you do. I mean, I just happened, my husband happened, wanted an outboard motor. And that was the first thing that I thought of. Okay, we'll win it for him. What technique do you recommend to overcome negative thinking? As you mentioned, a lot of people, especially in their first seven years uh, are conditioned in a way that they need to unlearn mm -hmm. or remember, what's the best way to start doing that? Okay, fortunately today there are very, uh, there's quite a number of books. The Power of Positive Thinking is one. You Are What You Think, Proverbs, and uh, what, there's a magazine now, a national magazine, and it's called Woman's World and it comes out once a week. That is the most powerful, positive uh, book that is available today for anybody. Even my son reads it. And in this book, uh, on every, uh, every other page, there are thoughts for the day that are very, very powerful on love, on protection, on ener energy, every everything they have. It may be rep uh, uh, repetitious, but it's uplifting. So we look forward to that book. Every time I get it, I give it to my daughter Laura. I have a copy here. But it's woman's world. Okay. And I can't say enough about that. And you have also mentioned earlier today the law of attraction, which is very similar or identical to the system that you talked about uh, a long time ago. Is there a difference between the law of attraction? Is there something specific uh, pe uh, that people uh, should do to activate it? Or is it everything that you already mentioned in your four-step process? I don't think it's anything new or anything different. Uh, the law of attraction is desire. The minute that you desire something, what you're doing, you're conjuring up energy. And, air, and then you're projecting out energy. And so that's, it's not a big secret, but many people don't realize how powerful thinking is. So desire is a criteria. But one of the things that you mentioned just now is uh, that desire is related to energy and everything is energy and vibrations. And the more energy you send out, 
the more comes back. So what specific technique would you recommend for somebody to raise their energy because it sounds like it's all related to how much energy a person can send out? That's a very good, good question. Because when it's, it, it follows desire, you have a desire. And if it's a positive desire, it, it can be negative too. But how much time are you spending on the, how many, how often are you thinking about it? Thought becomes things. And another thing that I need to point out, and that is when you do something with emotion, emotion brings it faster, draws it faster to you. Emotion is, uh, well, what you do an emotion, and you can watch a person when they cry or when they sad or when they curse and when they get angry, they're angry. The emotion is intense. And usually when they get very, very angry and then something happens because they're so angry that they don't lose, they lose the fact that they're working with an instrument that could be and cut their hand off or something. This is energy. And I think there is a statistic on it. More accidents in this entire world are caused when somebody is really enraged in anger, energy, anger because then they, they don't look at anything else. They're so caught up in anger. And so when you are projecting and you have energy, like I said, you can even taste it. You can smell it. And that's energy going into a car with the new smell. That's a perfect example of using this more, more energy because now you're experiencing it. See, we're touchy, feely, smelly people. I mean, th that brings on more energy for us. So if you have the opportunity, especially if you want a car or a new house, you go into a new house and you can smell the new house because the lumber is still exposed. And so that would be more effective. Or you, if you find an old house, get into it and roam around and this is my place. That's how I chose when we were working, going in different areas, when my husband was traveling, I would go to rent a place. I would go in and my husband said, check it out. And I would go through the house. This doesn't smell good and I'd leave. So you become, I mean, there are all those little things that you have at your disposal that you can utilize. And so this is energy. This is energy directing to it with emotion. Okay. Thank you. Another question that I have is that, uh, th especially the positive thinking part, all starts in your mind. Now, a lot of people have a negative mind. Uh, how do you get, how do you just suddenly cancel that? Uh, and I'm asking that because a lot of people uh, that I've talked to, they, continue, they just say they are not even the master of their own mind. How do you become the master of your own mind? Desire. Nobody can do it for you. You can point it out. And Dr. Murphy had a good saying. Uh, after I met him and he sent me his books, and I would, when I called him, I said, Murphy, I said, you have, all, yeah, he sent about 13 books. I said, you say the same thing over and over and over again. You say the same anecdotes. Can't you think of something different? And he roared with laughter. And you know what he told me? He said, you know something? If they read it 42 times, it may sink in and they'll get it. I think that's profound. Because sometimes you have to read it over and over and over again until you say, oh, this makes sense. Then you change. Nobody can change for you. You can't tell people to change. You can't tell people you're too negative. Nothing is going to happen to you. They don't believe it until you give them something and they look at it and might have to read it 42 times. And then they'll get it. Okay. Hopefully you don't have to read it 42 times. But Murphy was the one that said it. I call it Murphy's Law. Now another question that I have is, 
after you had mastered this, the how to attract anything you want, always, you then went on to study the silver method. Now, what was it that led you to, why did you continue uh, studying and what was it specifically about the silver method uh, that, why did you choose to learn it? Because you already were a master of your domain. Why did you continue specifically with the silver method? I guess I told you that earlier, because when I first met Jose, I was very impressed with him. I wanted to know more about it. And then when I went into the program as it is today and learned techniques, things I didn't really know. Uh, when you're reading that chart, brain, uh, how the brain functions, valuable, fantastic information. But the information uh, when you can when you can change energy and you can stop the bleeding, uh, this was profound. Where else would I've ever gotten that technique? And so that's why I was so grateful for it, and I became his PR just because he impressed me with the knowledge he had and was sharing it with everybody. Wonderful one! It was a completely uplifting experience for me. Uh, life is a life is either a daring adventure or nothing, and I guess that's been I mean, my philosophy in contesting. And then all of a sudden, I I win everything I possibly could win or want, and then I'm bored. So what's next? That's when I got serious, serious about. What makes me tick, click, and get sick? What makes you get that way? Why are you that way? Why are people different? I, I got so intense, inquisitive about that. Then I started on a whole new world of, of researching. <laughs>